Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by veteran, author, and journalist, Christoph Morrow. We're going to be talking to Christoph about his books and about his veteran service. And by the way, happy Veterans Day. And thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Thank you for having me, Curtis. It was very kind of you. Why don't you start That's... off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, uh, my name is Christoph Mara. I'm from uh, Houston, Texas. Actually, I was born and raised uh, just outside of uh, Houston. And um, I left for the military after uh, I was actually the first kid to graduate high school, even though I was the third uh, born out of four. And um, when I went to the military, I found out I had Tourette's. Uh, I didn't know that was, I didn't have a diagnosis yet, but I, they, I was disqualified from serving any longer because of, uh, because of that. Um, and uh, I moved around a lot. I had a really uh, around the country and uh, got into journalism and 911 dispatching and a bunch of other stuff. And I won some awards in journalism and um, I, cause I, I taught myself actually to do that. So uh, to write and um then I moved to Canada after that, and I've been living in British Columbia for the last five years. And I just published my first book this year called The Second Son. So. Well, for those who don't know what Tourette's is, explain to them what it is and what the symptoms are. Ah, okay. Well, uh, Tourette's, uh, it's, it's called a syndrome. And a syndrome, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it's a, a pattern of behaviors that's somewhat predictable. Uh, but the, the cause, the underlying cause is unknown. Um, and so uh, Tourette's, we, uh, we know that part of the brain is uh, literally deformed. And so um, my ability to like have any restraint in, in many senses uh, is, um, is crippled. Um, and so there's, uh, along with having a number of like ADHD, OCD, and all the others um, that are comorbid, but Tourette's is a neurological disorder. So what happens is I lose control over my body and certain parts of me um, will uh, do some kind of motor tick. Um, and uh, it's, in, it's involuntary. I can't stop it. And um, it's actually led to a lot of injuries and despair, but um, it's what I deal with. So catamaran. Kind of, kind of Okay, well, you, you talked talked about being in journalism and winning some awards. So explain mm -hmm. to people what you did in journalism and the awards you won. <laughs> well, um, okay, so I, I started out in sports um, because that's where the position was available, and uh, but uh, and agriculture. But I wanted to cover uh, news. I wanted to do uh, news writing, so I told my editor that, and within a few. Like a month or so, I was um, I was the main news writer, um, and uh, okay. So <laughs> she told okay. She called me in her office. She said, "I want you to write a feature," and I said, "Okay." So I uh, I found out when I went back to my desk what a feature was, <laughs> and uh, I had to write it about this guy named Ray Yannick. And a feature is just basically I'm going to talk about this guy's life experience and just tell you who he is. That's it. Um, you feature someone. Uh, and so I said, OK, um, I studied the structure of an article that I uh, of a writer that I admired. And then um, I wrote an article and that one won an award. Um, and then <laughs> from the South Texas Press Association um, and then from the Texas Press Association, from like the main one. I got an award for photography because there was a. I took a photograph of a of a woman being uh, rescued 
um, in a one of those canopy military trucks from the National Guard. And uh, yep, that was it. So tell us how difficult it might be living and writing having a disability. Well, um, Tourette's, the, the way that mine manifests is, is quite violent uh, against me. I, I slap and punch myself in the face all day. Um, I poke my eyes. Um, you know, I've, I've given myself black eyes and uh, I can't really use my right hand anymore. Uh, because so I have to type everything with one hand um, because I um, I can't move my thumb I don't know why but I can't grab anything with it, it it's excruciating and then I think I something wrong with my pinky <laughs> anyway um, it's really quite um, it's a it's it encumbers my spirit I think um, to be um, so injured all the time and uh, it's also rather disturbing to see someone doing. Uh, I know that because um, even people that know me for a very long time, um, it startles them still. Uh, and uh, it's hard to, it's like, it's just, so. It, there's just something I think that's innate within humans that when we see someone committing some kind of self-mutilation, we're like, no, don't do that. Um, and so they have to, everyone that's around me has to argue with that impulse, I think. And it's really just, it's a really uncomfortable feeling, I think. Um, and uh, I just, uh, it, it also, it's not great for me because I, I don't like to have that. Uh, it hurts, first of all. It really does. Um, I spend a lot of my time reeling in pain, um, while, even while I'm trying to work sometimes uh, on my book. Um, but working on my book is the closest thing that I get to uh, any kind of peace um sanctuary yeah um and the thing is that the way the that my tics my motor tics or vocal tics manifest i say different words all the time um like i've been saying catamaran lately but um the way that they can manifest uh physically have been has been um some at some points really uh almost catastrophic for me I had a tick where I was clenching my teeth and I couldn't stop. And like, I was afraid I was going to break my own teeth. Um, and I had to wear like a mouth thing to stop them from doing that to cushion. Um, and then um, I had a tick for a while when I was stomping my foot. And so I couldn't stand up. I couldn't, you can't walk like that um, because uh, if you do that, if you stomp your foot, imagine doing that like as hard as you can over and over again all day and um you could break your you break something easily um uh i mean there's just so i mean there's just so many honestly i've i yeah i have a big scar across my knuckle now because i cut i punched something very sharp i don't know what it was but uh yeah okay well you also do a lot of work around social issues so kind of tell us about that work well okay um I guess I'm not, I'm not really sure what you mean, but I, I, I have done like um, volunteering and stuff like that in the past, but right now what I'm doing in terms of volunteering is, uh, is I teach uh, writing, just any form of writing to people. I do it free for free. I do it one-on-one -on -one, and it's for at least an hour. And uh, we go for word for word over their work. Um, and it's just by appointment. You just have to make an appointment with me and I'll do it with you at any time you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, I really enjoy that. I consider it a public service, um, exterminating bad writing wherever I find it. Uh, <laughs> and, um, it's also a lot of fun for me because, uh, I get to tease them. I tease, I tease my students. Some of my students actually teach, like they teach English. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I, cause I didn't get a degree. I don't, I have a high school diploma. That's it. Well, tell us about some of your big influences, like, uh, some of your your favorite authors are uh, who influences you to write. Oh goodness gracious. Oh man. Um, the, there is, um, for me, an obs I, I have an obsession with it. I, I can't, I have to try to do other things to not do my writing. Cause if, um, and it's one of those things, if I avoid, I feel terrible. I think everybody can, um, not relate to that. Um, but my work, um, uh, 
is like is probably the most important thing in the world to me. Um, and the things that I try to do, I try to like, uh, I try to play video games. But I haven't been able to do that lately because of my hand. Um, but I generally do at least a thousand words a day. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't remember like the origin of the question. What was the question exactly? I forgot. It was just basically who's your. Oh, excuse me. Who's who is my right? Right. Okay. So, um, okay. John Steinbeck is actually my. Um, uh, in terms of uh, my philosophy as a writer, uh, which I think is imperative that you have one. Um, like you have one that you can describe. Like you can word for word, you can explain what it is. John Steinbeck said his whole mission as a writer is to help people understand one another, and I I share in that completely. So uh, that's my mission as well, and uh, along with uh, him as an American writer. In terms of American writers, I love um, Mark Twain, uh, Sylvia Platt. I think she's actually American. Um, let's see, uh, sh- uh, mm, let's. I mean, uh, I actually used to work with. Um, I used to exchange letters with a an American writer named uh, Robert Owen Butler. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1993, I think, for a good scent from a strange mountain. Um, he was very kind to me um, when I wrote to him, and we spoke about fiction and that sort of thing. Um, and um, other writers, like overseas, I would say Oscar Wilde, Shakespeare, um, Charles Dickens, um, Tolstoy. I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, there's there's so many so many alex haley i love alex haley um and uh i mean the the, th white's the once and future king is probably the only work of literature that i can i that i can name in the epic fantasy category um and then and i love tolkien of course because he's a charming and brilliant storyteller okay you went from zero readers to thousands overnight yeah. <laughs> Explain to people that process and, and how, how you uh, did that. So um, I had a TikTok. I started a TikTok account uh, as a means to market my book. Um, but I wanted to talk about Tourette's for a while because I knew that, you know, that's one of those things that's just going to come up during every video. <laughs> so that you better just know. So I, ex- I had like I, I made a bunch of videos over a few weeks. Um, and then someone who has become very dear to me uh, now. uh, She lives near me actually. Now Uh, she, uh, she bought my book and she fell in love with it. And um, she made a video about how much she liked it. Well, two people the next day bought the book and I made a video in response to that. I said, I can't believe two people bought my book now and I can't, I hope they love it anyway. So the third day comes around, I wake up, and I find that uh, I'm number 247 on Amazon in the epic fantasy category. And so I made a video saying, wow, that's cool, right? I, I sold, a, I sold, I made a video about two books and now I've sold a bunch of books. I sold like, it was like 80, it was, or 40, I think it was, it was a very modest number, but it was still um, definitely worth celebrating. And um, uh, so what ended up happening is that video actually went viral. So it went to, it, it, uh, like has almost 400,000 views. And then the next one after that kind of went viral as 300,000 or something. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I just gained thousands of followers and people reading my stuff. And but for example, yesterday, Cardamon, Cardamon, sorry, Cardamon. Um, yesterday I, uh, I discovered because of my living situation, I, I, I have roommates and, um, my Tourette's I, I scream. Um, because of it and it's really quite loud and disturbing um and um they talked to me about it sort of and i realized that i was gonna have to put up a bunch of soundproofing stuff on my walls and around me because i otherwise everyone's gonna hear me all day and night um and you know i just don't want that um so I went on my yesterday. I went on TikTok and I I said that I I made a wish list on Amazon and for the soundproofing stuff because I can't afford it, but I know that I need it now. <laughs> um, and 
they be the people that, that it's all bought they bought it all so and it's all coming to my house they did so i was i was really floored by that but i didn't think it was gonna work like that quickly but yeah they got everything on the list that i needed at least well that's pretty cool so tell mm. us about your book and and what readers can expect when they read it okay well um I like to think that if you could split the difference between in terms of violence uh, and con and, ton and the kind of content that would surround that surrounds often violence, like politics and the things that are more sophisticated that usually you can expose adults to also along with violence. Right. Um, it's like splitting the difference between Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. So like if you can imagine somewhere in the middle of there, but it's all it's leaning more towards Lord of the Rings. And, and uh, yeah, uh, because I, I don't. Uh, it's it's a it's an epic fantasy that spans like literally half a world. Um, there's hundreds of characters, um, but and the way that it's structured is uh, it's similar, very similar to Game of Thrones. Um, because if you've seen, if you've read the books or seen the show, the first episode or the first chapter is about Ned Stark, uh, and, and then the second chapter is about uh, someone else, like Tyrion, I think, in a different part of the country or world or whatever and then the third chapter is about i think daenerys in a different part of the world right and so my book does the exact same thing it follows different people in different parts of the world and then follows them throughout their their adventures throughout the books and how much they intertwine is is a mystery um until you read it and um yeah uh there's i mean there's every i mean it's i tried to be comprehensive uh in its content there's um there's every kind of moment and I tried to find every uh, nook and cranny of the human uh, spirit and, and the, and the, all the different iterations of our emotions. Um, I tried to explore. Um, and, you know, I tried to also add um, there's stuff that you would feel morally ambivalent about, like, um, you know, and, and it's, uh, yeah. Um, that things that you that are, that are that just you cannot be certain that you're doing the right thing or that there was unintended consequences. Yeah. What well, tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? <laughs> I'm actually doing volume three of that Second Son series. So the that's what I've. Um, it's a continuation again of everything that I was just saying, uh, and also uh, of all the stories in within it. Um. And it's a lot of fun. I like it more than the first book. Um, just be also because I'm a better writer now. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I actually, I, uh, the, the, the book I just uh, published this year is my return to writing after quitting for five years. I quit when I was, after I was a journalist, then I moved to Canada. I stopped writing for five years from the ages of 27 to 32. And then, um, the BC government, the British Columbian government said that I needed to find that they couldn't find me a job like that could I could do because because of my condition. So the lady, she's like, maybe you should just start writing again. I mean, if that's what you have, that's what you can do. So I, that's what I did. And I started writing the book about 10 minutes later. Throw at your contact information, website, anything like that. So people can keep up with everything that you're up to. Um, you can go. Mm, if you, uh, you can go to Amazon or any kind of social. If you go to any social media website, uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, TikTok, you can type in my name, Christoph Morrow. Uh, you can even Google it, and it will certainly lead you to me because uh, I've been cached now for sure because of that whole episode. <laughs> um, and so now, yeah. Um, yeah, so Google knows who I am. We'll close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if there was something I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about it, just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Uh, if you want any kind of uh, life of goodness and happiness, I think that uh, truth should be your first concern. Okay. Well said, ladies and gentlemen, please check out Christoph Morrow's work, support him, pick up his books. Follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always. 
thank you for listening. And Christoph, thank you for joining us and sharing your story. Thank you, Curtis.
For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.